Welcome back to the Cosas Verdes Crypto Trading Show. This is Tim. Today is, I don't even know what day it is, but it's the 16th of June, 2021. And if you like this content and you've been here before, turn it up to times two speed so you can create the initiation of your Timification. And new viewers, uh, here is what this channel does. I address the two biggest things you're doing wrong. First is... You don't know when to enter a trade, which actually this video will help you drastically. That's kind of what this one's about. Um, so that you don't uh, hit buy in a clueless fashion with your money. And second, I teach you how to take profits like a boss. So you're not buying and praying and thinking things are up forever because obviously that hasn't worked out very well for anybody, has it? Um, so I teach you how to do that. And so you can accumulate more crypto and have a more profitable crypto journey. So if that sounds good and you end up liking the content at the end of the video, so don't hit like or subscribe if you're new until you know you like this stuff. But if you end up liking it, you hit subscribe. You have to let me know whether you want to be a cryptillion or a crypto crackhead. Those are the crypto pronouns that are gender neutral and gender fluid uh, in this community. And I have free uh, content so you can understand both me and other crypto traders better in terms of the four hour 21 EMA. What the, if that doesn't mean any sense, uh, make any sense to you, check out my library videos. They're both in the description section and in a playlist on my YouTube channel. So that said, initiation of Timification, let's go and turn it up to times two speed. All right, today's gonna be a crackhead video. So I was just on a, um, uh, a higher tier Patreon call and I have all these crackhead lines drawn. So that mixed with the fact that nothing has changed since my last two or three videos. Actually, the exact things I've been thinking were uh, likely going to play out are playing out almost perfectly. Um, and I'll show you that here just in a second. And plus, it's only been a day. Nothing's happened. So I'm going to do crackhead timeframes specifically so that you can see um, what would be equivalent of quantum physics how they interact with cosmology, not in terms of makeup, but cosmology, Einsteinian physics. So how the small essentially creates the large and to see all the chaos that happens within the small time frames and what's going on when you take a microscope or an electro electron microscope to things. Um, and that's what this video is going to be about. In addition to showing you how the larger time frames make moves when there is a gr agreement agreement among the small time frames to the larger time frames so this is a very different video i typically don't recommend people use these small time frames but it is uh good to understand them uh so here we go first off what you are seeing here is i'm on the bitstamp chart of bitcoin i'm on the weekly candle and what i have done is i have looked at where there are wicks on these candles and or candle bodies so the body is the thick part the wick is this um you know these these uh the small uh lines like a candle wick i made lines where they all or were several of them align either wicks with bodies or bodies with bodies or bodies with wicks a combination of those two and those are my pink lines these two pink boxes are where two pink lines of either a couple wicks being close with a couple bodies, I made a box instead of drawing two different lines because those that general area will act as support and resistance. For example, the first pink box is this candle body with that candle body. One of these two, or both technically, could act as resistance, but usually when you have two major, especially weekly or daily lines that are that close to each other, Resistance happens somewhere in the middle. It often doesn't hit one or the other. Or sometimes it'll just hit the top. It, it sometimes can, but oftentimes it hits somewhere in the middle. So that's why I made a box for when they're, they're pretty close to each other. And the same thing happened down here is that um, these two candle bodies align roughly with these two wicks. So I just made a box indicating that this is going to be resistance on our way up. The orange lines are daily. So now you go to the daily. Let me get rid of my EMAs. Um, what is this blue line? All right. Um, oh no, that that's like one of my uh, guidelines. All right. Um, the daily candles are the uh, where they align are my orange lines. So you can see here you have wick, 
wick wick candle body wick candle bodies wick that's gonna be a lot of resistance especially because it's so far it's in the middle of this weekly and this weekly that one will probably be a decent resistance well this one might not be because it's this line is too close to that line but it's still a line because um you know you have a uh, you have wick wick candle body candle body wick candle body wick wick actually this might be pretty strong <laughs> you got a lot of resistance points so that that's how i'm making these lines oftentimes i don't make four hour lines like a different color because they almost always align with the daily and i've already checked they pretty much do i didn't see any four hour lines now on current price action i zoom in and i go to the hourly and i make those lines white and thin unless for example one looks like a potential macro low i made that white and thick because it's still a one hour a line but the chance of that being extreme support because prices over it is very high and that's actually why i was buying things when bitcoin went down to 31k because <laughs> they hit that line perfectly and i i market bought right as i saw it bounce market bought pretty heavily actually i used all my tether in that moment um and so we're, we're going to get to how it all comes together. Just trust me here. Uh, now you zoom in on the one hour and you do the same thing wherever you see wick. It's a lot of wicks, sometimes candle bodies. So you see that uh, this wick here, these wicks here, that wick there. So that's that's going to be support because price is above it. So since price is above, if it comes down, it'll probably be support. You have another you know line here with all these. So you can see what I'm doing here, right? So we have several going on. And we sort of have one in no man's land. Eh, this, this could act as a pretty good support. So we'll add another line there on the one hour. So my one hours are white. My dailies are orange. Um, my weeklies are pink. Which do you think are the most significant? Which color? Which ones will act as the most resistance and or the most support? The pink ones, because they're the weekly. The daily over time will be slightly less significant in terms of where true bounces or true supports take place. And the one hours even much less significantly, with exception of if it kind of formed a, mac a potential macro low. <laughs> there, that's why it's a thicker line. I made that thicker to show myself, if I'm really zoomed in, that uh, this is a one hour line, but it's a potential macro low, so I made it thicker. All right, now what I'm doing is I like to take these EMAs here and draw them out so that if I go down to the one hour chart, they still remain. And somebody made a comment um, on YouTube that I can actually be on a smaller time frame uh, and uh, keep the weeklies. Uh, thank you for that. I haven't looked into how to do it yet, but uh, I really do appreciate uh, trading view tips like that because even though I've been staring at charts for like, you know, four and a half years, um, I never really taught myself how to use trading view because I, I, I'm more intimate with price and I use so few indicators, but really I was selling myself short and not learning it. So I, I do appreciate that. So um, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six EMAs. And I'm going to do something similar with these six major EMAs. I will uh, draw them out and essentially project where they're going to be so that they still remain when I go on to something like a 15 minute time frame. So I'm on the daily chart now. I have drawn out the daily 21. I have extended the daily 10. I have extended the daily 200. Four hour. Uh, it's between them. So I'm, I, I think price is actually gonna ignore the four hour 200. Um, I might actually want to extend that out. So I'll also keep it orange, but maybe thinner so I know it's not. Uh, so I'll keep it orange because my 200s are typically orange. So I'll make it a thinner orange. So I know it is a 200 EMA, but, uh, but it's not as an important one like the daily. All right, so I'll draw that out. Um, I got the, so I got the, uh, 
I got the four hour 200. I got the daily 10 and 21. I got the daily 200. Now I need to do the weekly 10 and 21. So I'll go to the weekly. And they are crossing. I'll make it red and thick so I know it is that line. Uh, I don't like how it says squiggly. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> now I have all those important lines and EMAs drawn. Now, when I zoom in, all of the quantum mechanics or like electrons spinning around the nucleus, they're going to make more freaking sense now. So let's go to a crackhead time frame. Let's just try the 15 minute. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let's review what I have been saying in my videos, what I think is getting ready to play out. I think we're getting ready to likely have a squeeze play on the daily where the red 10 and 21 act as support and will overcome the power but let, actually, let me um, let me get rid of everything but the ones I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the ten, the red, the yellow, and the um. Actually, let me get rid of price too. There we go. I'm focusing on this red line. Um, the yellow line and the orange line. What I think's got about ready to happen is, uh. Darn it. I think that these uh, these two lines here, especially the red one, but I think these lines are going to work together to come up and approach the orange line. And the orange line will continue acting as resistance until roughly June 23rd, until these two lines essentially say, hey, we are now stronger than you. We are stronger together. And price simply does chooses it can't you know it doesn't break below so therefore once it squeezes so close to this orange line these uh, the red and the yellow together will overpower this and price will pop out like a soap bar so pattern traders would call this an ascending triangle but here's really what's going on <laughs> um, which is why I'm not a big fan of pattern trading but because you just really miss the underlying reasons why those shapes are happening. Um, they don't happen because of shapes, right? But, um, but necessarily. So that's what I think is happening. And, and if we zoom in and put price in, you can see that what I guessed was going to happen is currently playing out almost perfectly. So remember when I said I'm drawing out the daily 21 and I'm making that yellow? Let's look in on the five minute chart. So this yellow line is not a horizontal. This is from when I scribbled the yellow 21, uh, or no, the daily 21 EMA. So that line, is this one that I drew out and it's yellow. So on a micro scale, you can see what price is actually respecting. And if you zoom in even more, you can see that when the first time it was approaching it, so price was coming way down relatively, and look how perfectly it freaking hit that. And look how, and so I drew it, uh, you know, I drew this out type of deal. But um, because the daily hasn't closed and it's not quite out here yet. But um, I mean, just look at this. 
So on the micro scale, it's the macro things that are essentially dictating the parameters of what happens on these smaller time frames. Smaller time frame means three minute, five minute chart, 15 minute chart. It's these things up here where my cursor is. Um, yeah, so like this is one hour, right? So that's what's dictating it, uh, those things. All right, and the one hour horizontals, if you wanna zoom in on these, so these white lines are the, um, Actually, I made this, should have made that a box, actually. So if you zoom in even more and look at these white lines, you can see how well they're respected. Or that comes up just shy, because I didn't draw them perfectly, but... You can so I'm on each of these is the five. You can see just how well in general things are respected. Sometimes it wicks a little past, yeah, but that happens because a lot of these technically should be a box, right? Because there there were a few things on the one hour that happened, um, and uh, but I just chose to make one line. And a lot of times the line works absolutely perfectly. Um, you get you know you get bounces perfectly on these lines. Even though I drew them on the one hour, I couldn't see all these candles. Like these candles don't, you know, they aren't there. But you can see how much price action is just either hovering around in general or bounces exactly off. Um, and when it breaks it, so here it broke this, it went down farther, mostly because it broke that line. And then a lot of people stepped in and became sellers because it tested the line, tested it again, and then people said, shit, I'm out and I'm selling. And then price got past it, started testing it, hovered around it, and said, okay, we aren't going down farther, obviously, because we have been confident on this white line forever. Now let's move up. Okay, well, let's make sure this actually we can move up. Let's test it a few times, dip down below. Okay, oh, we're going up to the next one. All right, let's go back up to the next one. All right, we passed it. Okay, let's test it a few times. Okay, okay, all right, now it's time to move up. Then, uh oh, where's my. Uh, wonder what I'm missing right there. I must be missing. So let's actually, let's find out what I'm missing. I must be missing something here. That might be my four hour line that I wasn't looking at. Hold on. Yep. I missed it. So there was a four hour line, Timothy. So uh, uh, no wonder. I didn't think I saw any four hours, but yeah, I missed it. So I'll make my four hour, let's say purple. Or no, let's make it blue. Ha! Caught an error. And I'll make it like this mildly thick. Four hour. All right. Now let's zoom in even more and see what is happening in the world. And I'll remove my, I think my A is removed. Yeah. So any colorful line on here you see is from a higher time frame. Okay. So where's my blue line? Where did it interact with it? Here we go. So you can see how perfectly it came up and respected that because price on the four hour scale previously, if you look left on the chart, had a bunch of stoppage around here. It had a lot of price action and it just was respecting it. Um, if you move back even farther, if you can see it, can I move back that far in the five minute? Yeah, I'm going to have to scroll a long way to get back to it. So, because I'm too micro zoomed in. But anyway, you can see how that blue line really did come into play. And I guess you can make another one hour line here. So now we're getting into a bunch of lines. Um, so I guess there should have been a one hour line about right there. That wick and that wick and all those wicks here. So I'll make another white line here. So since this white line is above current price, the likelihood of this actually being what rejects it is very low because it's a one hour line. What's most likely going to reject things is the weekly 
EMAs and or this weekly box. So when you're trying to trade, if you're a crackhead, you need to know that uh, the different, essentially like by color coding, which lines hold most significance. And, be, and because there were no weekly or daily lines necessarily down here, even though there's probably a weekly line somewhere from uh, back in uh, January, but um, you were mostly working with one hour lines based off of essentially this area here and this area here. So all of this price action was based off of the one hour lines created and just this. And this is why range trading is so much more profitable than trying to guess this is a low because your data is set for a little while, for a couple days, based off of a small set of data. And the rest of this data here is essentially based off of this. So you're in a statistically way more probable trade than if price is first falling down here and you're trying to long the market, long the market, long the market. Uh-uh. You want to wait until it creates a little something. The data set, now you can guess that you're dealing with this data set for at least a couple days or some time frame until it breaks out. And you have a statistical probable trade anytime it hits this line, this line, or uh, this pink line. You have extremely statistical probable trades because of this data set being set already. Does that make sense? And when it breaks above it finally, you can assume that it should come down and retest it. So it, it finally broke above it, playing around with it, came up, got rejected exactly from what? Exactly from the daily two. So this orange line is the daily 200 and this blue line is that four hour line. It got rejected from the combination of those two because, you know, some people trade specifically on the four hour chart. Some people trade specifically on the daily chart. And these groups of people are both very large. So therefore, you had a this group of people come in and become sellers here and that group of people. And because these groups of people are so big and then you have groups of people who even trade like the 15 minute but they also drew out their daily and their four hour lines like I'm doing. So you have so many groups of people who are selling here. Does this make sense? And that's why it works. It doesn't work because there's a line there. It works because people, large groups of people see that line and those groups of people overpower the buyers who probably either aren't seeing the lines or don't care about the lines or or whatever um, and that is essentially how this works that's why price moves because these groups of people plus a few others who are looking at the same lines hit market sell and or had limit sell orders here a mixture of those two so the sell pressure overcame the buy pressure for those reasons so trading is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy it only happens because humans are making choices and you have to anticipate how big of a group of humans will make that choice based off of what is there. Is there a line there? Is there a fib there? Is, you know, are, is MACD crossing up as, you know, prices writing like on, let's say MACD on the dailies writing up as we're retesting this line. We've done this for a while. We're clearly not going down and the MACD crosses. Then a lot of people become buyers. So, you, know, you have to anticipate which groups of buyers and how big they are, are making choices on what. And when you're a pattern trader, for example, you don't have a clue of any of that. Even though pattern traders, mostly because of YouTube, there are a lot of retail pattern traders out there um, who are slinging around a lot of money on leveraged exchanges, losing their money most likely. But um, so you also have to anticipate what that group of people are doing with the idea that they're typically missing the reasons why. So oftentimes you can see where their rallies will fail. And if you want to short on them as they're longing, you want to take out a long short position um, or a big a short position as, as you think pattern traders are seeing a like a reverse head and shoulders and but you think it's going to get rejected here first pass you know that that's the type of stuff where you actually anticipate what that group of people are doing to work in your favor uh, but pattern traders do get things right you know a decent amount of times but because uh, they are a fairly big group of retail folks mostly led by youtube and it's i think that's slightly unfortunate um, and hopefully this video is trying to, you know, is giving you some darn good data so you can see why. Um, 
So, but to be fair though, to pattern traders, they also are their own group of people. You have this, so they are oblivious to the daily. Uh, a lot of them are, not all. Um, the daily or um, the four hour chart. They are not trading these charts. They are trading a freaking triangle or a freaking, you know, uh, channel or whatever. But they're still a big group of people. So even if you're not a pattern trader, you do have to be aware of that group of people as well. Um, and so uh, let's see here. So what pattern traders were probably looking at here is probably some type of inverse head and shoulders. And they bought the breakout of this. And that probably is mostly what caused... So this is probably a lot of retail uh, pattern traders taking on long positions there, uh, buying the breakout um, of that inverse head and shoulders. And unless those are the same people taking profits here, uh, other folks who trade the daily and the four hour said, uh-uh, I am taking profits and shorting on you here, you know, because I see these lines and maybe you don't. But it's also possible that they, uh, those same pattern traders, that's just where they're taking profit. So if you did 3x leverage, that's 15% profit. That's not a bad place to take it. But the thing is, um, a lot of times they're not trading that way and they're not really necessarily for sure. They wait till like the... They wait till like a next, you know, previous pattern shows up. And in that case, they didn't get it because it was rejected by um, a four hour line and the daily 20, the daily 200 EMA. So, so it is kind of important to, uh, to know what pattern traders are doing. That's probably exactly what happened. And I bet you could find, you know, whoever does pattern trading, they're probably talking about an inverse head and shoulders here and trading that breakout. Pretty simple. But did they mention where they're going to take profits? should look at their videos and see if they did <laughs> because i could have told you exactly where to do it uh, pretty simple play and actually i already did i, I let folks know it's probably going to get rejected by the daily 200 um as the as these two lines here um the daily 10 and 21 are going to squeeze it up so uh, once again if you zoom in on like even the three minute chart just look how perfectly so what i've been saying is i think the, the yellow and the red are going to act as support and as they get closer to the orange line right here the yellow and the uh, the yellow and the red together, since they're so close and they're going to start angling up, they will together most likely. It's not guaranteed. They're going to overpower this, and it's going to squeeze. So this is price, and this these are the two lines. It's going to squeeze it out, and this will break because these two overpowered that orange line. And that's what I said in a YouTube video, I think two days ago. And now that it's actually playing out, and you zoom in on these tiny time frames, you can see. Ta-da! It's not rocket science, but it does take many years of staring at charts to kind of anticipate what's going to happen. So um, it does take a lot of practice and a lot of um, learning what didn't work, really. Um, I, I typically learn by what? Mm, I like to think what will work, but mostly focus on when I'm wrong to not be wrong again. I, I try to uh, figure out what doesn't work. And that's how I learned how to trade. What doesn't work, what doesn't work, what doesn't work, and compile a big long list of what doesn't work mentally. Um, and I had a trading journal for like eight months, but after I did that, it just the scenario started repeating, and now I just have them all memorized, right? So um, really having a trading journal uh, to figure out what worked and what didn't work um, in retrospect after you close your profits out. Hopefully you do close your profits out. Uh, doing that for about a year or so, I know, you know, I, I have like almost a photographic memory, um, or I do have a pseudo photographic memory, actually. <laughs> That's why I'm so good at taking tests in school. I can just like see the pages <laughs> uh, still, um, or at least the general concepts of it, uh, not necessarily words, but um, like in biology, if I had pictures of stuff on there, uh, like cell structure, I could just, I can just see it. So I don't know. Especially if I stared at it one hour before the test, I could still see it. But anyway, so you might need a trading journal like for longer. Um, but it, you know, if you don't have pseudo photographic memory, but, uh, but, but after a while you'll see in your trading journal, if you start recording, what did I do? Maybe even take a snapshot, you know, like print screen and save it somewhere and then write down what you did and where you did it and just do that. Like every trade, just, you know, keep it and save it, do it every time. And then once you close your trade, go back to that same page where you had re-entered and tell yourself, write down what was the result. And after about six, 
it would have been awesome if, if somebody had started doing that in uh, like April because you would see an uptrend and a downtrend. But uh, typically the patterns repeat after you've seen a bear, a bull market and a bear, uh, like a, a bearish uh, downturn, then pretty much the patterns start repeating themselves for the most part, like 80%, 90% of everything is just something you've already seen. However, it won't make sense if you don't combine the parameters of the large time frames, like this pink lines, the pink box, the daily lines, and then the daily EMAs like I've drawn out, like how perfectly it got respected uh, up here. This orange line is something I drew, right? I drew this, right? So if you want to zoom out, go back to the daily. That orange line. Is that it's so I drew that out. See that? And when you zoom in, you can see how perfectly it is. So um now the second part of the video that i want to enter here is uh showing you indicators so this is pretty much just all emas and price action and really you could just trade off that you i mean indicators are pretty nice though but i don't use a lot of them uh you can you know choose your own a lot of people like macd but uh, um i i feel that i don't need macd like everything i need i can see it um somewhere else as well uh in what i use and it's a very it's very simplistic but honestly trading should not be sophisticated unless you're maybe measuring volume uh and where the volume is coming from there might be some sophisticated tools but you don't need sophisticated tools to trade you really don't um you don't actually you want to stay away from uh sophisticated tools because that makes you less intimate with price and uh seeing how price behaves so if you could focus more like you know for example what i do and you don't trade like me obviously but my trading style not only am I more of a um, uh, range trader, uh, ranges, most, a lot of ranges, breakouts. Yeah, I don't try to catch knives or 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 um, or uh, uh, short macro tops, like because that's how you lose your money. But I'm more of a range trader uh, because the parameters are set, like I said earlier. But um, uh, I'm mostly so within that, uh, I guess, categorization. I trade off of the behavior of price. Like Bitcoin is its own cat, right? It's a lion. And a lion behaves differently a little bit than a tiger. So Ethereum might be the tiger. The way it moves might be a little bit different how it walks. Maybe the walking pattern with four legs is slightly different or how they run is slightly different. Maybe, you know, like tigers run with their paws going outside of their back legs and lions inside. I don't really know how that works, but <laughs> I'm just making examples. So I, I, I am more intimate with, with price as like an animal and I can feel what it's going to do, but I confirm it with the charting tools, sort of what I'm going over here. So I, I, you know, I, I just use uh, things in the charts like these lines um, and uh, my couple of uh, indicators that I use, which isn't very much, I, I pretty much use that as uh, not a confirmation tool, but a tool to uh, see how likely is what I think I'm feeling, how what what are these indicators and these lines telling me uh, about the likelihood so I can guess the probability of, of entering this trade. All right. So... And so my squeeze play, like on the daily, I could feel that, you know, with just these couple of lines, I could feel that this is how Bitcoin moves a lot. When it has two EMAs together, approaching a longer EMA, it often squeezes price out like a soap bar. It's a movement. It's a feeling. And so if I wanted to take on a long position, I would use, you know, stuff like uh, drawing out my lines and to know that, okay, uh, this looks pretty good. Maybe look at the um, look at the daily. Uh, you know what, what am I looking at here? Like what else would I use to do this? Um, honestly, there aren't a lot of indicators that I use that would have confirmed that, that was going to happen. Um, yeah, so I would have done it mostly. I feel in the EMA um, at that point. Let's see here, what else? Yeah, I guess this indicator is saying the uh, weekly RSI is angled. Well, it was angled up. Um, it's trying to make a bounce off this white line, so the general direction might be up. Um, I would also probably say to uh, know that's a probable trade is uh, know that the daily, uh, if I can get a cleaner chart here, um, the daily just made a higher low and a higher high. 
higher low and higher high, higher than that. And this is higher than all those. So the general direction now, the trend technically and officially is up on the daily and the four hour and the two hour. Because if it's up on the daily, it's, you know, it's up on um, those time frames close to the daily. So, you know, entering a long position at for those reasons with the feel um, would be statistically more probable based off that, even more so than indicators. Now, the reason I'm having trouble finding indicators that are um, helping me out here is the second part of the video. The most indicators, depending on, so let's say you just take MACD. The MACD on the 15 minute, one hour, two hour, four hour, daily and weekly are not going to be agreeing with each other. So when things don't agree with each other, they don't all say shit's going up or shit's going down, right? You're going to get choppy stuff until at least a few of them start aligning so that when those align, they start dragging price in one direction. And then the few that aren't aligning, lighting, like the 15 minute or the four hour are the two that aren't lining, but the daily, the weekly, the one hour are all aligning, something like that. They then drag them into aligning with them. They drag them. And so right now, that's not happening. That's why I was fishing like, which indicator is telling me? None of them really are because they're all disagreeing with each other. That's why we're having this nasty market, which is another reason why taking profits regularly is pretty important right now because um, a lot of time frames are not agreeing with each other. Um, so let's do a specific example. Let's, uh, let's use RSI. So this is RSI on the daily. RSI, um, the, uh, the moving average is the white line. So in general direction, the direction's up. The moving average is going up and it looks like the daily rsi is coming back down to tag it before it keeps going like this so the general direction of the daily rsi is up but currently the daily tick is down which means if that daily tick is down then the lower time frames likely are going to be down as well especially like the 15 minute if the daily is doing this that means the white line on the 15 minute is probably down it's angled down so if you want to go to the 15 minute See, it actually just scrolled out. Perfect example. So you can see here how just one tick on the daily. So like this is one tick, one tick, one tick, one tick. One tick on the daily like this will drag down the 15 minute moving average. See how, so once this comes back up and is moving with the daily, that means those in the daily perhaps then ticks back up then the 15 minute and the daily, two pretty big time frames that people trade, they're going to be in unison. They're gonna be saying the same thing. However, when that happens, then maybe it's the one hour that's not in unison, right? So the one hour might still be going down or be going like this. So perhaps the 15 minute then has to, ha, uh, is, uh, starts going up, but then to wait on the one hour, what happens is the 15 minute heads back down because the daily then, because the daily, let me get back to the daily. Ah, so the daily then, sure it ticked up and it dragged the 15 minute up, but since the one hour is waiting, it needs to tick back down to test this, this moving average, the white line again, which you can see it tests a lot. See how it just wiggles around it and even gets rejected by it. So it ticked back down, therefore the 15 minute would go back down and once those two finally come back up and the daily ticks up, pulling the 15 minute up, maybe then the 15 minute, the one hour and the daily are all in unison. And that's when you would get your big move that could potentially take you to bust you up above the uh, daily 200 EMA, that orange line, which is causing big, uh, which is causing uh, big resistance right now. That orange line right there. Those being in unison would be enough to potentially drag the two hour and four hour in the same direction. Which in the four hour, that would mean it would drag the RSI, the green, above the white. And as the daily retested, it would bring this down. And when, when it dragged the uh, daily drags the 15 minute back up, then the four hour goes like this, and that makes it enough to where the moving average is up. Now you have the 15, the one hour, the four hour, and the daily, and that's the type of power that can get you above a big obstacle like the daily 200. Because daily 200 is a big freaking deal. <laughs> it's a big deal.
all right? So there are other indicators, but here's the thing about using a ton of indicators. Each one indicator is really like five because you have to view it on different time frames and they need to be in unison. So I'm on the daily, the four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute. If you can get those, so if you can get the daily, the four hour, the one hour, and the 15 minute all in unison, you're likely getting ready to get a nice move right as they're crossing in the same direction. But as that's happening, if, if, if they all start becoming in unison as something is like it's waiting on those to all turn and it's going like this, testing between these lines, doing the micro time frames as you are focused on those unisons, okay, knowing that the macro trend is now up on the daily scale, those three things combined, indicators in unison, the micro scale is hitting um, a bunch of horizontals or macro lines, and then the macro direction, the daily trend is up with a higher high and a higher low. Now you have three different reasons to know or to judge whether you are entering a statistically probable trade. You might have to watch this video again. I had a higher tier um, uh, call today and um, we went over this and I was like, shit, I haven't taught YouTube this. And it's just general information. I'm not giving away any secrets, really. So um, so if you liked what you saw, hit like. Uh, if you're new and you end up subscribing, make sure that you tell me in the comment section whether you want to be a Cryptilian or a Crypto Cricket. We'll see you next time. You just got typified.